What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to talk about how to use the extension Profile Builder to build a highway in SketchUp. So um, before I get started I do want to take a second and thank my two newest supporters on Patreon, Clara Phillips and, and Victor Bencomo. So Patreon, as you know, is the website where you can uh, support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, um, you're thinking about supporting the show, please check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one thing I do want to note is this extension is on sale for 25% off um, through, I want to say, next Monday. So you can check it out, download a copy at thesketchupessentials.com slash profile builder. So in this case, we're going to use the extension Profile Builder, which is uh, basically a smart profile building extension um, to create kind of a highway along some terrain in SketchUp. Um, I will say you could probably do something like this. Um, you could probably like drape a face and then use joint push pull and then try to do something like that. Um, the, the nice thing about this is we can use this to build an assembly that not only um, creates the highway itself, but we can also add some guardrails and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm going to bring in a location um, with the add location function. And uh, the add location function with the satellite imagery is something that you can only use in uh, the pro version of SketchUp, I believe. Um, I think you can still get maps. And I'm not sure if you can get the terrain or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the add location function. And if you don't see that, you can go to uh, view, toolbars, location, and check that box and this will pop up. And again, that's in the pro version of SketchUp. And what you're going to do is you're going to um, you're going to basically navigate to whatever location you want to add a road to. So in this case, I'm adding a road to an area um, that's got kind of some hills. Um, I drive through this in my commute every day. But you can see how when I do that, that brings in the location data for that area. And so we could start off and we could just generate a road along this flat plane. But um, I, I kind of want to... I, I want this to conform to the terrain a little bit more. Like I don't need it to be perfect, but um, this area is kind of on a hill, and so I want my road to kind of conform to that hill. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the option for toggle terrain, which is up here up top. And you can click on that, and what that does is that turns the terrain in the area on. And so you can see when it turns the terrain in the area on, um, I get all my hills and everything else in this area. And so what we're going to do is we're going to um, generate a path and then we're going to generate a road along the path and so in order to do that the first thing we need to do is draw our path and I'm going to use an extension called tools on surface from Fredo 6 this is a free extension that I'm going to use and basically what this does is this allows you to draw lines and paths on terrain and so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm going to pick this first option, which is the line on surface. And I'm just going to click on a point and then I'm going to move my mouse and I'm going to click on another point. And you can see what this is doing is this actually comes in here and this draws a line that actually conforms to that surface on that face. And so we'll just go to this point for this example. Um, you could probably use the arc tool to kind of continue this if you wanted to. But now what we have is we have a path and we can use Profile Builder to build a profile along that path. And I'm actually going to build along, um, I'm actually going to build on top of an assembly that's already in Profile Builder. So I'll talk about the way that it works and then what we're going to do is we're going to add some guardrail type extrusion. So that'll explain how it works so we'll have our complete um, path. So the first thing you're going to do is there's two different things in Profile Builder that you should know about. There's profiles and there's assemblers or assemblies. And so uh, what profiles are is those are objects that it extrudes along paths. So like for example, um, in this case, this is the last object I had that did that. But if I was to select this line and then just select this option for build along path, what it would do is it would extrude this profile along the path that I have drawn. So that's what that's what profiles are in Profile Builder. Assemblies allow you to combine profiles and repeated components in order to build more complex assemblies. So if I was to select the assembler dialog, and uh, usually when you um, when you install Profile Builder, if you click the little uh, the little magnifying glass, it's got a few assemblies that are just kind of built in. 
um, in addition to whatever you build, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this one called Roadway. And so I'm going to click on Roadway, and what that's going to do is that's going to load the Roadway assembly. And so now I can come into my model and I can pick the path that I selected, and I can pick this Build Along Path option. What that'll do is that'll extrude this roadway along that path. And you can see how when it does that, it's bringing it in a little bit below my road. Um, and so all I'm going to do for this example is I'm just going to kind of move that up a little bit. And you can see how basically what this assembly has is this assembly has a piece of road base. It has a road and then it also creates the stripes. And so if you go in here and you kind of uh, take a closer look at what's included in this roadway, um, you can see how under profile member it's got four options. So it's got the road surface, so that's this profile right here. It's got the base, it's got the left line, and it's got the right line. And actually what this is doing is this is taking... I believe this is taking a very narrow face and extruding it along this path in order to create this assembly. All right, and so one thing you might note is once we move this up, um, this actually doesn't, the base of this doesn't really conform with this face anymore. And uh, I'll probably do something about that. I'm, I'm just going to use a quick workaround on that for right now. Um, so I want to focus a little bit more on just adding to this assembly. And so what we want to do is I want to go ahead and add a couple guardrails to this assembly. So this is a built-in roadway assembly that we have within Profile Builder. Well, what I want to do is I want to add a guardrail to this. And so like I said before, the way that Profile Builder works is it has repeated components and then it has um, extruded faces. So it has profiles and it has assemblies. So to start off, I'm just going to model a box and I'm going to call it, we'll call it 4 inches by 4 inches. And you know what? Yeah, we'll call it 4 inches by 4 inches for right now. And we're just going to extrude that to a height of, I'm going to call it 3 feet. I'm not sure what the actual height of a guardrail is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that object. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click Make Component. And we're going to call this Guardrail Post. And so once I've created my component for guardrail post, one thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to fix the axes because you can see how right now the axes um, basically match up with the model axes, and we don't want that. We don't want this to do that. We want them for this object to be kind of um, running along this line and this line. So all you do is you just double click in here, and you can see how these are uh, lined up with the model axes for right now. We're just going to go to Tools, Axes. And what it's going to ask is if I want to update the component axes to match my modified sketch axes, and I'm going to say yes. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. You can see how now if I double click in this, this actually runs along the red and green axis the way that I want it to. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take, we're going to take this um, assembly and we're going to add this component to it. So you can see how right now all this has is this has a bunch of repeating midline components. Well we want to click the little plus button for add component. And so you can see what that does is that adds in a second component into your model. And what it asks you to do is it asks you to pick from your model. So you're going to click on this object, then you're going to click on the component you want to add, which in this case is this guardrail post. So when I click on that, that's going to show the name guardrail post in here. Right, so once I've added the guardrail post, if I click on this object and I click the update button, what that's going to do is that's going to add this guardrail post. And right now it's placed it right on the center line of my road. And so now we're going to just adjust the way that this is showing up in here. What we want to do in this case is we want to adjust the left right offset of this object. And so basically what this is doing is right now this is set on the center line of our road assembly. And so what we want to do is we want to change that left right offset so it's more off to the edge. So in this case that means we'd be in the ballpark of about 17 feet either to the right or to the left. So I'm going to change my left right offset to 17 feet. I'm going to click the update button. And you can see what that did is that moved this 17 feet to the right. So you can see that right now what's going on with this is this is um, this is basically setting its height based on the center line of this object. And so what we need to do is we also need to adjust the up-down offset. And in this case, we can adjust the up-down offset 
um, probably down about five and a half inches. So I may pick six inches. So I'm gonna adjust this down negative six and then I'm gonna click the update button and what that'll do is that'll move these objects down negative six inches. And so now what we have when you look at this is you've got all of these different guardrails in here and you could adjust the spacing if you wanted to. Um, but in this case, all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a profile that gets extruded along this object. So I've already drawn in my posts. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw in my guardrail. And so what I'm gonna do in order to do that is I'm just going to, first of all, draw kind of a, just a canvas. So just something along the red axis or just something out here that I can draw my, draw my profile on top of. So I'm just gonna draw kind of a flat face and now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna draw my profile. And generally speaking, so I'm just gonna use the line tool in order to do this for right now, um, but I wanna make sure that I'm actually drawing on this face. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just come down to this face and I'm just gonna draw a profile for my guardrail. And this is probably gonna be pretty rough, but it'll get us the general idea. And so I've got this general guardrail shape and I'm just gonna offset this And so basically I've drawn this profile that if I extrude it along this line, um, it looks like a guardrail. And it's probably a little bit big, so I may uh, scale it down a little bit. All right, so once we've drawn this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna double click on it. And this is just so that we have everything selected in this profile. And so now that I have this profile selected, I'm just gonna click the plus button. And when I click the plus button, I'm gonna name this guardrail. We're gonna click okay. And you can see what that does, and you kind of have to have everything selected in this, is this actually brings in your profile for your guardrail. And so now, if you were to push-pull this, for example, or to extrude it using Profile Builder, what you would get is you would get this guardrail piece. So if I was to push-pull it, it would look like this. And so what we want to do is we want to save this guardrail profile. And so once we've created that, we're just going to click the Save button. So you're gonna to wanna to save these and you're gonna to wanna to create kind of your own folder for all of your profiles that you create just so they're easy to find. And one thing I don't like about Profile Builder is it doesn't let you save them in the Profile Builder folder, which gets kind of annoying. Um, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to File Name, you're gonna name that and you're gonna click Save. And then once you save it, then you can bring that profile in to your assembly. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the profile member tab and remember we added the object for guardrail. Well now we're gonna open this up and we're gonna go find that that profile that we created. So in this case, I'm gonna click on this object for guardrail. So I'm gonna pick that object for guardrail and I'm gonna look at it, we'll leave it as is for now. We're probably gonna to have to make some adjustments. We're gonna go ahead and click okay. And so now if I go in here and I update this object, Okay, and you can see how when we updated that, that drops that right in the middle of this object. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to adjust this a little bit. And so in this case, for this assembly, probably what I'll do is I'll just adjust it within the actual um, assembly manager itself, not within the profile. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my left-right offset. And if you remember, we already set our left-right offset to, I wanna say negative 17 feet for our guardrails. So we'll just set the same thing or for our uh, guardrail post, well now we'll do the same thing for the actual extrusion itself. So we'll set this to negative 17 and click the checkbox. And what that'll do, looks like we need to set it to positive 17. And click the checkbox. What that'll do is that'll move this 17 feet off to the side here. And you can see how that's not giving us exactly what we want. So in this case, probably what we're gonna do is we're going to set it to minus 17 feet minus four and nine sixteenths inches. So in this case, that would be 17. So 16 foot, 16 foot, we'll say 16 foot seven inches and see if that helps us. Any, so basically we're just setting our left right offset so this sits on the face. 
um, of this object. And you can see how you've still got a little bit of overlap in here. So we'll call this minus one and a half. So 16 foot, five and a half inches. And then we'll update it. So you can see how now this looks a lot more like it would be mounted on this face. And I realize that the center of this would probably be where you mounted it. But um, for, for this example, it's good enough. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to adjust the up down. So you're going to set your up down to about 1 foot 10 inches or maybe a little less, maybe 1 foot 8 inches. And we'll click the update button. And so you can go ahead and erase out your example profile, but now you can see what this is doing is this is basically adding a guardrail along the length of your road. So you can see how you can set this to do all of the posts. Um, it'll extrude your guardrail along the length. Um, I'll probably come back in outside this video um, and adjust or add it to the other side. But you can see how by using profile builders assemblies, you can generate things like this really quickly and really easily. And uh, kind of a side note, because I don't know of any way to get this to just like completely match um, the terrain. Probably what I would do in this case is I would select the bottom of this and use an extension like joint push pull and just push pull this until that it's until it's down below this face. So I would use something like uh, joint push pulls probably the vector tool and I would just take this bottom and I would just extrude it straight down until it looks like it's going to intersect with this face that way that way you've got this following the terrain and then you also don't have a big gaping hole right here so you can see how this and one other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could come in here and for the components um, so for your guardrail post, I'm going to go ahead and name this guardrail post, but you could set your spacing in here to something a little wider. So if you wanted your spacing to be like 16 foot, and then you come in here and you apply that to your assembly, basically what that would do is that would give you less of your vertical posts. So you could adjust um, how many of these uh, support posts this puts in by doing that as well. And then if you wanted to detail these out a little bit more, since they are components, all you have to do is just come in here and if you edit one of these then all of them are going to change because they're components and so if you wanted to say put a base plate or something like that on these you could just come in and add a base plate to one of these And then if you look, since these are repeated versions of a component, they'll all change. So you could come in here and detail these since they're done with components. So this is really powerful for creating kind of smart assemblies. That's where I'm going to wrap up today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Um, do you see some other uses for Profile Builder? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. Um, if you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.